Hey, welcome. <laughs> this is the Ponagachi. This is a very fun uh, kind of weekend project, and it's it's actually pretty hard to describe what this thing actually is. Um, so I'll try my best. The, the Ponagachi is a project that runs on a single board computer like the Raspberry Pi Zero here. Um, and it, it looks for Wi-Fi. Specifically, it, it looks for clients on Wi-Fi networks, and it does something called a deauthentication. Um, a deauthentication is where this device will send uh, basically a message to that uh, wireless client to disconnect from the access point that it's connected to. Uh, once the device has disconnected, it will want to reconnect, and that's where the Ponogachi comes in. The Ponogachi will listen to that handshake process and save that entire message sequence to a file called a PCAP, which we can save to our computer and open with tools like Hashcat or Wireshark and dig a little bit deeper and learn about Wi-Fi. Um, this thing is super cool. Um, obviously, it's kind of a play on the Tamagotchis, but it pones instead, and it's got these like uh, pretty interesting little faces where the Ponogachi will... Um, it, it keeps flashing, it updates, but when he's looking around, it'll like look left and right. Um, when it does deauthentications, I think it has like sunglasses on. So really excited to talk about this thing. We're going to go through how to set it up, um, some of the things you can do with it, um, how to connect to the, the device. Um, we have our power on the left here and then um, the data on the right, which we'll be SSHing in. And oh, look at that, we're associating to Phi Optics. Um, again, we get a funny little Ponogachi face. Um, the other thing I'll show you is where this gets really interesting is you can get a cheap little battery. Um, I've got a 1500 milliamp hour power bank on Amazon Prime. Um, it's currently got a hair tie around it because I tore into it. I wanted to maybe pr 3D print a case where this is all together. But with this little battery, this thing will run for probably, I think three to four hours, maybe more. Um, I ran mine yesterday for about that long and then uh, recharged the battery before, uh, before it went dead. So, all right, let's get into it. So this is actually a really, really basic project. There's not much needed for kind of the bare minimum. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and unplug it. Um, so this top screen is actually an e-ink screen if you've ever uh, used an Amazon Kindle, same kind of technology. You'll notice I just unplugged it. It doesn't have power right now. It keeps the whatever last image was on the screen. Um, it just stays there until it gets updated. Um, and I think it might fade over time if you like left it off for a couple months. Um, but yeah, e-ink is pretty cool. This display specifically is the Inky Fat. Uh, there's a couple other displays you can use with the Pi Zero. I want to say this one was like 25 bucks. And the way it goes on is via these headers. So if we can pull these off. Boom, there we go. That was a little difficult. Uh, so here's the Raspi Zero, um, Raspi Zero W with headers, I think they say. Um, so the only difference is the Zero W headers comes with these like headers already installed. There are Raspi Zeros that don't have that, um, and you can solder it yourself, or you can just buy one pre-installed. So I got that, and then again, the Pimeroni, where'd it go? Pimeroni Inky Fat. Uh, 2 inch, 2.3 inch e-paper display. Uh, if we flip this guy over, still has the screen on it. Um, so you just, I mean, honestly need the Pi, a SD card, there it is, uh, your display, and then a external battery or power source, which I already have. And then to get this thing um, onto the Pi is pretty simple. We just took it off, so basically put it back on, line up all your pins, and push it together. Uh, what I do need is some kind of, like it makes me a little bit uncomfortable that it, I don't have a, any kind of gap or, or something to fill this gap here. Um, it's just kind of hanging on by the, the header pins, but not too big a deal. Still works. To get into the installation of the Ponogachi there it is. Um, so head over to essentially ponogachi.ai is the official project website. 
Uh, once you land there, you'll get something like this. Go to installation, and this will give some awesome, um, awesome instructions. This is actually not that hard, but we'll go through a little bit anyway. Um, so it shows kind of required hardware, what things you'll need. Um, so I already showed, but I have the Pi Zero W with headers, the e-ink display. Uh, I don't know if that's clear. Um, I got the, again, inky fat it's called. Um, you can get a case or 3D print a case. You will also need, of course, storage. I have a micro SD card um, and then perhaps a battery if you want to be mobile with your Ponagochi. Um, so anyway, I'm going to go to flashing an image. And if you hit download the latest release, um, you'll see the latest Ponagochi release. You want the uh, .zip file. Um, these other ones are source code and SHA-256 uh, sums, but grab this one. I already, I've already got it downloaded. And then the other tool that you'll need if you've never flashed a uh, Raspi image um, is Belena Etcher. I think that's how it's pronounced, not really sure. Uh, great tool, really easy to use. Um, if you're a hardcore hacker, you can use DD and copy the image over. But anyway, I'm gonna put my micro SD card in and we'll get to it. So click uh, Belena Etcher, you see here, oh, uh, my no name SD card has showed up. Um, so we're gonna do flash from file I guess you could do flash from URL actually. I haven't ever tested that. So I have my image selected, select your target. Um, there's some hidden targets, that's my system. Don't write this to your system, that's a very bad idea. Uh, just make sure that uh, you have the right target. If you're unsure, you can unplug your SD card and see if it disappears within here. Um, hit select and then flash that. Our flash is complete. Uh, the file was written, but we are not done yet. Do not remove your um, SD card, and in fact, I think Belena auto ejects, so I'm going to <laughs> remove mine and plug it back in. And we get it here, boot. Um, so this is, I believe, the boot partition of the um, system. So there is a configuration file that we need to load on here. Um, I'm gonna do a mount on my system. Um, I'm on Mac OS, this is pretty similar to Linux. Um, and if you're on Windows, I don't have much help for you. Uh, look through the documentation. There's probably more instructions there. So looking here, we can see, uh, I can CD to volume slash boot. And here are all the um, files on the system or same ones that we're, we're looking at that will our, our initial kind of configuration for this thing. So I'm on the uh, configuration page here on the docs. Um, the Ponogachi will take this, um, it's called config.toml or T-O-M-L. Um, they actually switch from YAML to TOML, but uh, it's pretty simple. It's just a few different lines that you can configure. I'm gonna do vim uh, config.toml. You can do whatever text editor you like. Um, as long as you're just creating a file within that um, boot partition. Uh, you can use Visual Studio Code, Notepad. Uh, I like Vim. So we'll go in, paste all this stuff. And then each of these lines, um, you can read through the docs here, but th this tells you what's kind of going on. Um, specifically, ui.display.type. Um, this thing you will need to change if you're not using a wave share too. Um, and in fact, I think it's inky for mine. Yeah, if you just control F here, um, you can see all the supported uh, variables. And indeed, inky is what I want. So I'll do inky um, ui.displayColor. I tried to get this to work. So my e-ink display, I think is actually supports like red color, uh, but I couldn't get that to work. So I'm gonna leave this out for now. Maybe I'll play with it later. Uh, even if you are fully opted into Pwn Grid, you can disable reporting for specific networks. So essentially what I do here is put in your uh, SSID for your home network. Mine is called loading dot 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 two. Uh, terrible name. I had a loading dot dot dot, but then I had another and yeah, it needs fixed. So I'm just gonna go for loading uh, dot 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 two. And then I'm gonna get rid of that comma. So just looking through here, I think this looks pretty good. The other thing you can set up top is main name if you'd like. Um, so I had mine as like Papa Shell, which I thought was kind of funny. Uh, let's see. 
yeah, if you're not sure on config, like just read through this these docs and, and you can kind of get a pretty good idea. But I think this is all that we really need. So I'm gonna go ahead and write that file. Okay, so we are ready for the first boot. Um, this is actually just the image from my current installation, but I've prepared a new SD card. So we're gonna chuck that thing to the side, uh, pull out the new one, and plug it into the slot carefully. Right there. And then one thing of notes, um, the left port here on the Pi, if you're looking, um, so HDMI, micro USB, micro USB, the left one is your power. Um, so we're gonna start um, just reading through the documentation on my computer. So start by connecting the micro USB cable to the data port of your Ponagachi's Raspberry Pi Zero W, then connect the other end of that cable to your computer. Um, so yeah, they actually say data first. So both of these cables, these are both plugged into my computer. I'm gonna go the right one since that's what they said to do. Um, I don't think that gives power. No, it doesn't. We don't see any kind of LED. And then we're going to connect the left one, which is power. So power left, data right. Plug that guy in, and then you'll see the LED blinking. Um, the Pi Zero only has a single LED when it's green. I think that means that the SD card is being accessed. Um, so we'll wait a moment here and see what happens. Okay, so I just kicked my camera back on here. Um, the display was flashing a little bit and it looks like our config was loaded in as we have our Ponogachi name, Papa Shell, and then we'll see generating keys do not turn off. Um, so it takes, you know, a minute or two to get to this process and then this process should take uh, maybe a couple minutes too. We're, I mean, running on pretty, you know, basic hardware, just the Pi Zero. So doing crypt cryptographic stuff uh, could take a little bit. We'll wait and see what happens. Okay, check that out. I just kicked my camera on. It says, cool, we got one new handshake. Um, so I don't know if this was a deauthentication or if it just saw a new client connect. Um, but you'll see now in the bottom left, we have pwned one one. Um, this one's actually on loading dot dot dot, which is uh, a second access point I have. Um, there's, it, it is kind of confusing. Loading is, we're not waiting on anything. That's literally my access point name. Uh, but that handshake is captured onto the device and we can pull it and do some interesting stuff. Of course, full disclosure, only, you know, use devices like these on your home network or networks where you've been permitted access uh, to. Okay, so I'm feeling a little bit foolish because I did not plug in the data port of my Ponogachi. Um, depending on how you um, configure your power on this thing, it will configure the device to either uh, be in what's called manual mode or automatic mode. And automatic mode is where the Ponogachi will just start looking for wi wireless clients and de-authing them. Um, like I just found a Spectrum Wi-Fi. Yeah, it's hard to see. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, versus if you have the data port plugged into your computer, you can do configuration. So we're gonna plug in the data port and then try to connect to this device um, and kind of figure out how it works and then look at some of those handshakes that it's found. Okay, so we are plugged in and immediately I get a new device. Um, I have already configured this for my previous install of the Ponogachi, uh, but you'll wanna go through the docs here and configure your new USB device. So that, that data port that I showed you, that right port on here, this is what we're actually using to SSH and it creates a uh, little network that you can use. Uh, it's pretty awesome. So just to verify connectivity, I'm gonna do a ping to 10.0.0.2. Uh, if I do an IF config EN9, uh, is that the device? I think that is. EN9, and we'll see that I am 10.0.0.1 or my MacBook is 10.0.0.1. Um, so this is great, we can ping the Raspi um, over our data cable. Again, go through here and you can check this stuff out, um, is we'll SSH to this thing. So we're gonna do SSH pi at 10.0.0.2, because I am one. Um, I deleted the offending line in known hosts, uh, basically just deleted that guy so that we can now SSH into the device. So we do an SSH, it asks if we want to connect, continue connecting. It'll say uh, yes, and then our default password is going to be raspberry. Um, highly suggest you change this, and then we'll get a quick little message of the day. 
And actually, I'm going to switch up my screens. There we go. Uh, so we'll get a quick message of the day, and this tells us all about the Ponogachi. So we can say if you want to change, we could see if you want to change my configuration, use Etsy Ponogachi config.toml. So you can cat that file, and this is exactly the configuration we made earlier. Um, so we can change any of that stuff. Uh, you can find your defaults here. Don't change it because it gets recreated. Um, Ponogachi is managed by System D, which is essentially your kind of uh, system management for services. Um, so there's some commands there we can see as well. If we do a systemctl status Ponogachi, we can see that it's started. We've got green active running. Um, the service is up. Um, and then one other cool thing is that we can do a tail F on the logs on Ponogachi. And this is pretty awesome. I'm going to hit Control C. But you can see exactly what the device is going, or what the system, the system service Ponogachi is doing. Uh, we'll see that I actually don't know what some of this means. The board number of epochs. Uh, I think this has to do with the learning aspect. This, yeah. If you see AI here, um, again, all this stuff is in the documentation. Uh, but we'll see channels. I don't know what four, seven, eight. If that's channels it jumped on, but we'll see that it sent an association frame to my printer on channel 11. I think this is the um, decibels. And then deauthing. Oh, it deauthed a Mac device from the printer. It's odd that the Apple was, uh, was connected to that. And then sends an association frame, sends an association frame to my Spectrum Wi Fi. Um, and then it's waiting, and it goes kind of back into that same loop. So once we're in here, let's uh, let's read over our docs a little bit. We'll look into usage. Uh, so yeah, this, this talks a little bit more about that auto AI and manual modes and how these get um, how, how the how these can, how these work essentially. <laughs> so we can say if connected to the USB data port, your Ponogachi will start in manual mode. This means it reads the log of the last session, reports statistics. Auto is the default mode if you only connect USB power. Um, so my Ponogachi is currently active. It's in uh, AI mode, um, which essentially does some kind of learning. I haven't read everything about this just yet. It's pretty interesting. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and actually reboot uh, the Ponogachi so that I can get into um, manual mode because we can do a little bit more configuration from there. Back, we have the Ponogachi in manual mode. Um, you might be asking, why would you want to use manual over auto? Uh, manual is when you want to essentially transport statistics from the Ponogachi and see the better cap web UI, which we'll show in a moment. Uh, but we, what we should be able to do is to copy that uh, Ponogachi.local. Uh, I'm going to SSH back into the device. We're back in. And then we can open a new tab and go to ponogachi.local. Um, so this actual address is the better cap interface, which doesn't seem to be loading. But the other thing we'll show off is the, the if you go directly to the device and 8080, so 10.002.8080, um, you can get the what's on the screen of the Ponogachi. You, you can see this. And you can see this whether you're, I believe, whether you're in manual or auto mode or not. Um, so kind of cool. Um, some different tabs up top. We can see different configuration for the Ponogachi. In fact, there's plugins. I haven't explored any of this just yet. Um, so this is some stuff I'm really excited to get into. I think, I think this Paul GPS one. This might configure like GPS coordinates um, for where it sees certain SSIDs. Um, there's some really cool projects out there that kind of aggregate that that data. Uh, peers, I believe this is the uh, where the Ponogachis can pair to each other. So they have a way, if you have a friend that has a Ponogachi, they can like peer up and do stuff. I don't know exactly how that works. And then the other thing is this inbox. So the Ponogachis, um, you can connect these all again to the like larger grid of Ponogachis. And if you go to PonMap, um, you can see a little bit more of this. It does require a connection outbound. I don't know if we have that. Oh, we do. Okay, cool. So, <laughs> so my Ponogachi, I'm actually doing um, a connection share with my MacBook. Um, there's, 
instructions on how to do this host connection sharing. So this was super simple. Uh, the one thing for me, I thought that these were scripts I needed to run from the Ponogachi. They're not, you run this from your host system. Um, so in my case, I went to Mac OS X, um, found this script here. Um, again, never like run random stuff uh, from the internet, maybe look over it just a little bit. Uh, but this is the script you'll want. Basically copy paste this into a file called macOSConnectionShare.sh, um, give it executable permissions, so a chmod plus x, and then run this and you can share your connection from your Ponogachi. And I think even uh, my DNS isn't working. Um, so this is a pretty simple fix, but you can add essentially your name servers to resolve.conf. Um, probably want to be root to do that. Oh, that's not what I wanted. And I, I think there's a better way to add this so it's persistent. Uh, persistent, I've noticed on reboots, um, resolve.conf gets wiped out. But yeah, now we've got uh, DNS from, from Cloudflare was that 1.1.1 address I put in um, within Vim uh, or Etsy slash resolve slash conf. Uh, so you just do name server space 1.1.1.1. Um, again, not permanent, so yeah, probably a better way to do that. Quickly, I wanted to talk about uh, the Ponogachi and Wi-Fi cracking. So wh what does this thing do? Is this actually like you're going to go get all these handshakes and crack, uh, you know, get all kinds of passwords and different things, uh, which of course you should not do. Um, again, this is a learning tool. So. From what I can find, the answer is sort of, maybe not really. Um, I found a really good write-up uh, for this blog called alicebobandeve.org that talks a little bit more about Wi-Fi handshake cracking and some of the different um, methodologies of doing that. Um, maybe you get some, you know, maybe passwords that are weak. If there's really uh, simple passwords, people using password, there may be a way to get that from the handshake. Um, there are certain tools like BetterCap um, that are used to crack some of these handshakes. Um, but again, primarily this is a learning device. So just really quickly, I wanted to show um, where these handshakes are stored. If you do a CD to slash root and handshakes, um, this is where the like raw PCAP files are stored. Um, from what I understand for each um, essentially network a PCAP will get created that has handshakes for multiple clients. Um, so I believe if you you know do a scan one day and then come back later to the same um, access point, I think it might append to those PCAPs. I'm not 100% sure on that. Uh, but anyway, if you're looking to you know inspect these PCAPs a little bit more, um, again, there's some tools um, like Hashcat that or. I think Hashcat and maybe BetterCap can do uh, stuff with these, but I've been using um, Wireshark. So I have a folder called Handshakes, and I've essentially just been using the SCP utility to copy these over SSH. Um, once you have those, you can open up Wireshark. Um, and this is one for loading to my home Wi-Fi. And it's really interesting to look here. I don't know if you can see, but I have Echo B, which is my thermostat um, that is you know, sending the, these handshakes to, to my ubiquity access point. Um, and just scrolling through here, yeah, here, here's Apple. So there's, it, it does look like it's multiple devices, not only just my Echo B. Um, so pretty interesting stuff. Again, this is, you know, a, an educational tool to learn more about Wi-Fi security, um, first and foremost. All right, so that is it for now on the Ponogachi. I really hope you enjoyed viewing this video and learning a little bit more about uh, Linux and both um, wireless security. I know that I really did. This thing is awesome. I've had a ton of fun with it. Um, I'm excited to dig a little bit deeper into some of the community plugins. I know you can write um, you know, plugins within Python to do things with GPS. Uh, maybe, maybe I'll 3D print a case for this thing. But I uh, hope you enjoyed. Let me know if you like more if you'd like to see more content like this and uh, hack responsibly. See ya.